Hey there, Stephen Bears Nikki here, and welcome to another Fossil Fighters Top 10 video. For today's list, we'll be covering creatures that I think would be good dinosaurs for the Earth element. Terrestrial, that is, ground dwelling creatures are only fair game on this list, but be sure to leave a comment as to what creatures I might have missed, either on this list or my previous list for the fire, water, or air elements. Alrighty, let's dig in. Number 10. Diectodon. A mammal-like reptile that survived the extinction event of the late Permian, which wiped out 90% of life at the time, which is greater than the extinction event that would kill the dinosaurs, this little guy was basically the mole of the creatures at the time, around the same time that the Gorgonopsid dominated the supercontinent of Pangaea. However, Diectodon was able to get by, digging deep in the ground, which provided both shade and protection from predators. This little guy is proof that it is not always size that counts. I mean, if he had a unique move that evades damage and inflicts damage on the next turn, like the Pokemon move Dig, he could be one of the more slightly overpowered but still weak Vivasaurs, with decent support effects that could compensate. Number 9. Didicurus. A car sized relative of the modern day Armadillo and its prehistoric relative the Glyptodon, Didicurus was different from both, what with having a cannibal sized mace on its tail. As with other armored creatures, he could be a slow Vivasaur but he could make up for it with perhaps an earth-shaking result. I mean, he could possess a team rotation skill to mess up enemy formations, not to mention the auto ability to strike back at attackers. He could also raise defense, either through his support effects for AZ allies, the hardened skill, or even a combination of the two. You know what they say, a good offense is the best defense. Number 8. Scutosaurus a distant cousin of turtles, Scutosaurus herds roamed the super desert of Pangaea, though despite what was shown in Walking with Monsters, not alongside the Gorgonopsid, at least not necessarily, but rather Gorgon's relative in Ostrensibia. While Scutosaurus lacks a shell, its back does have bony plates in like manner. Scutosaurus have been known to have stones in their stomachs, because like sauropods and the modern day ostrich, these help grind the vegetation that they eat to help digest said plant matter. With that in mind, I imagine Scotosaurus either spitting rocks at the opponent or outright bashing boulders at the enemy team. While Didi Curus can rotate the enemy team, Scotosaurus could have the position lock ability to keep its own team in place, much like Kelon and Pandem, who are both turtle vivisaurs. Coincidence? I think probably not. Talk about a family tree. Number 7. Ambulocetus. Ah yes, the walking whale. Now, some might say that Ambulocetus would be better as a water dinosaur, but Pachycetus already has it, and Ambulocetus being of the water element would be uh, kind of redundant. I mean, its name means walking well, after all. The idea is to try and add some diversity among the vivisaurs. Anyway, Ambulocetus could confuse the opponent since Pachy can poison enemies. What could make up for Ambulo's average, if not lower, LP stat could be that it can transform into, you guessed it, a whale dinosaur be it Bacillosaurus, Brickmophyser, or even Liviatin, a close relative of the Brickmophyser. Being an ambush predator while on the land, Ambulocetus could have the order counter ability to strike back at the opponent. It could raise the attack and accuracy stats, but lower speed and defense with its support effects, at least until it transforms. Number 6. Platybelodon. One of the weirdest prehistoric animals ever, one related to an elephant no less, Go suck air through a reed. Platybelodon's dominant feature is its shovel-shaped tusks on its lower jaw, in addition to tusks normally seen on elephants in general, which kind of makes for natural cranial Swiss Army knife of sorts. But as a pterodostral and in size of a saurus in my previous water and air vivisaur lists, respectively, you'd do well to think twice about making fun of this guy, especially if it can throw dirt, water, or the like in an opponent to blind them or enrage them. Maybe Platy Belladon can cause a tidal wave of mud or water to attack all the enemies, as if with seismic force. Number 5. Entelodon or Deodon. Brutal. Huge. And hairy, stinky. And man, are they ugly. <laughs> Actually, yes, if I do say so myself. I'm honestly not sure which one to choose, though they're pretty much the same animal. Except that Deodon, formerly known as Dinohyus, is a larger gigahog. Either way, these prehistoric razorbacks are their own worst enemies, whether they fight from mating season, 
territory, food, or, well, just for the sake of it. With a rather brutal nature, I imagine that these bullies could be among the strongest of mammalian dinosaurs, rather perhaps by Arctotus and Gigantopithecus, or even Dinopithecus. They could be pretty strong in a group, but imagine giving one alone the solar power of Yikes. These fighters' battles could probably make even animals that one would consider normally to be general giants to avoid them, like the gigantic Indricotherium. And we thought dinosaurs alone are overpowered. Number 4. Aguhaceratops A ceratopid that I only recently heard about. Aguhaceratops may be similar to most ceratopids, but from some artwork, I have noticed one observable difference. Its horns curve upward whereas other Ceratopus horns either jut out straight forward or curve downward. I can imagine Aguha charging at the opponent only to flip them upwards, kind of like a dinosaurian Hercules beetle. He could probably counter attacks with a payback skill, as if to redirect an enemy's attacks to miss or to hit themselves, to be more precise. Did I mention its possibly inherent parting blow ability? Number 3. Edmontonia A notosaur that's obviously built like a tank, Edmontonia is at least worth mentioning. I mean, look at those shoulder spikes. It can either use them to defend itself, or perhaps in desperation, launch at its attackers with them. I mean, it did battle with Carnotaurus back in the day after all, so it probably could wield the payback skill in light of such defenses. Granted, some might view it as a carbon copy of Palto, but I guess to differentiate Edmontonia from Palto, Edmontonia could have poison skills instead of the sleep and excite skills that Palto has. Number 2. Dinotherium While it's not the largest mammal ever, no, I think that'd be Paleoloxodon, it is a very deadly herbivore, especially if we take its sheer size into consideration. Imagine a 14-ton elephant the size of a giraffe. That's Dinotherium in a nutshell. In fact, I'd say it must probably be among the deadliest of elephants. Anyway, whether in a group or alone with solar power, even a young Dinotherium is well worth avoiding. Even worse, imagine coming across one during May season. During that time, elephants get very, very aggressive. Though for balance reasons, don't put Dinoth in the support zone, or you'll lower an AZ ally stats. A lot. Even with all this potential power though, even Dinotherium isn't much compared to my top pick. But before we unearth my top pick, here are some earthly honorable mentions. Number 1. Dreadnoughtus Quite possibly the biggest and heaviest of them all. Dreadnoughtus was discovered sometime in 2014, but it might just hold onto this title for quite a long time. I mean, in no particular order, there was Ultrasaurus, then there was Argentinosaurus, then Amphicelius, and now, finally, here's Dreadnoughtus, weighing at over 65 tons. Being that big means he could have an insane uppy set to match, kind of like if he was the Blissey of the Vivasaurs. I imagine an LP stat greater even than that of Gavorn, the brute force Braden Gunnash who currently holds the record for 888 LP. I imagine Dreadnoughtus with at least 950 LP, probably to boost even higher with the miraculous Golden Fossil. Yeah, that's, dare I say, a Dreadnought load of LP. And on top of that, Dreadnoughtus' name means fears nothing. No, I'm not making that up, seriously. And to quote Kenneth Lecovara, the paleontologist who discovered the species, I think it's time the herbivores get their due for being the toughest creatures in an environment. Hey, I couldn't have said that better myself. Of course, it could have stats greater than that of sauropodivisaurs in general, and a weakness to five vivisaur attacks, but I believe my point has been made. Dranotus, besides possibly being the bliss seat of the vivisaurs, might just be not only the largest vivisaur to revive from fossils, but also the biggest dinosaur ever. At this time, anyway. Now, for secret number 11, we have, uh, uh, sorry Christian Slater, what was the name of our number 11 pick again? Allodopasunus, a long name for predators short on brains, but totally fearless in battle. Oh yeah, that's right. 
This terrestrial crocodile is probably going to be the Earth element equivalent to Fasola Sucus, who was on my fire Vivisaur ideas list. Do you agree with my picks? Were there any Earth Vivisaurs that I might have missed? Feel free to comment on that below, and be sure to like and subscribe for more videos by Steam Bears Nikki. I think I did mention at the end of my Air Vivisaurs list that there's a petition going on right now on Change.org for Nintendo to make a new Fossil Fires game for the Nintendo Switch. Go sign on it if your circumstances permit. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you later.